The 2019 Space Marine Codex has launched, and with it the first two supplements, the Ultramarines and White Scars. Last time I painted a son of Gilliman. This time, it'll be a scion of Chigoris. Let's paint a White Scar. Okay, here we are. This is our 30k, excuse me, our Primaris White Scars Reaver. He's primed white, and he has some Mephiston red on his shoulder, which we're going to cover up. And I converted some, I, I gave him some converted bits just to give him some more of that. Uh, 30k white scars flavor such as helmet plume um, the first step after priming is going to be to give him a shade mixed of lamian medium null oil and coolia green shade and here we can see the best part of white color schemes once we shade our details look spectacular i guess it's just the nature of having a white base coat and the dark shade creates the highest contrast you could have. Um, the next step is to, well for me anyways, uh, to fill in all the black areas such as his hair, his helmet plume, uh, and the joints of the armor. And here is the biggest con of white color schemes, is that any errors you make on that white armor while trying to do areas such as straps or pouches are somehow far more noticeable and offensive and also harder to cover up. So it takes a few more layers layers to cover up and it's a bit more painstaking. But them's the breaks. It's the difficulties of using white color schemes. Uh, so now I'm using my Instar's cool gray matte uh, paint, which is color match to Celestra Gray, and I mix that with white scar and lamin medium for all the layering I do for the whites. I just find that it is the right consistency and um, color value for layering. And I just want to cover up that shoulder pad. And here we are filling in all the red areas, um, just adding in those accessories. And I, I was experimenting here on this one. Um, I layered up with the ultramarine quite a bit with tone, but I'm finding the the white schemed armor doesn't really require it as much. Uh, but I was just smoothing out a few areas that the shade didn't settle as I would have liked. Uh, where it would be pool, it, where it pooled in an area that conflicted with the suggested lighting of the, the model. And just layering up and uh, shading in keeping with what I believe is the lighting of the piece. I recorded this over multiple days so the lighting in some of these clips is a little inconsistent and uh, with weather and you know on, on windy days where the clouds are. Uh, back and forth from the sun it's a little a little jarring but um, I think overall the the camera's um, adjusting aperture is is making it fairly clear to discern what's going on yeah there's when working with white I just find I don't know if it's me getting nervous but there's a ton more cleanup that's required so the layer on top of the Mephiston Red base for the red areas is Evil Sun Scarlet. And then I also use Wild Rider Red for uh, very small areas. And this is the shield, the Chagorian Buckler. I, I believe that's what this is called. 
Um, either way, this is a really sweet piece, and I believe it's from a Death Watch character. Um, it, gave him, it gives him some cool flavor. My understanding is usually only biker sergeants or uh, mounted units carry the Chagorian bucklers, but uh, maybe this guy is delivering it to a replacement buckler or something to a battle brother who's mounted. So in dealing with eyes, it's very finicky. You want to have the, for lack of a better term, the correct amount of water and paint on your brush, and you want just enough so that you just touch the the areas you want the paint to to adhere to. If that if that makes sense, it's a very uh, difficult process to describe in that way, but you just want mi <clears throat> excuse me, you just want the minimal amount of paint on your brush, and that way you have the maximum amount of control. I think for the next uh, painting video, if if you, this is something you guys want to see more of, I can maybe do a more focused approach. Um, if that's something you guys would like to see, uh, let me know, and then I can maybe, in the process of doing one of these marines for different chapters, I could uh, perhaps focus in on certain areas or um, target key techniques that are that are requested. Right, so after I fill in the pistol casing, um, I'm layering in Eschen Gray to kind of give some shading to those flat areas. And I'm essentially doing the same thing on these pouches too, just to give uh, some subtle dimension to those elements. Same with the uh, muscle fibers on the undersuit. Um, I hit them with Eschen Gray, and then I use uh, the cool matte gray, and I just mix that in to get a brighter tone for the edges of those pouches and the gun casing, which I'll get to shortly. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. Um, one thing I it's clear to me that I should get better at is the orientation of my hands in relation to the camera, because sometimes it's not optimal. Yeah, there's a lot of cleaning up as I go, um, on the armor in particular, where, you know, you're putting some colors down and, you know, Just happen, just happen to hit that white armor. Okay, here we are. Here I am applying the edge highlighting to the pistol, and then onto the hair as well. So by this point, the vast majority of um, all the initial colors are down. And towards the end of the video is a pretty lengthy attempt at uh, freehanding. Um, so you guys will have to bear with me as I, as you watch as I just destroy this guy's shoulder pad. Alrighty. Um, Oh, but before that, yes, of course, the metallics. Uh, yeah, so I'm hitting the anything that's supposed to be uh, gunmetal or silver, as well as the objects that are going to be gold because of the Vallejo liquid gold I use. Um, I want to have a metallic base underneath. 
but the mechanical components of the gun that we're doing right now, that's gonna stay uh, a steel, uh, a steel tone. And then we hit those areas with some null oil. Of course, tried and true method to get some quick and dirty, worn, uh, weathered metal. Okay, so just doing some cleanup on the face. Uh, when I was doing those eyes, it was a little, a little messy, so we're just cleaning them up too. So we get, we're getting less, uh, a more controlled look, you could say, as well as cleaning up the shield here. The intricate detail in the shield really look fantastic. <laughs> Funny how I say that, and it blurs. I'm out of focus. Alright, here we are. Slowed it down to a reasonable speed. Um, at this point during the cut, I had I did a bunch of cleanup. Um, painting the handle of the knife and cleaning up the shield as well. And here we are doing our gold details, which would include the knife handle, his uh, helmet plume uh, decoration, and the shield face. And then I follow this up with some Seraphim Sepia, which uh, nicely tones the, the gold. And I switched him to our Sector Mechanicus base so he can match his Ultramarine's Battle Brother. And with Stormhost Silver, I highlight uh, certain key areas of the metallic objects. Alright, so before attempting the freehand, I uh, did a pin wash of Colia Green Shade. Um, just because some of the contrast was lost, I felt. Or uh, it should be enhanced in, in any case. So here we are, uh, <laughs> here I am, trying to uh, do the White Scars uh, insignia. And it looks okay here, but um, as I work with it, I determine that it's a little a little inaccurate um, so I come back to it and uh, while it's drying I begin working on the opposite side doing the tactical symbol I believe or the close assault symbol um, in either case that's the correct symbol for the Reaver unit Yeah, and it's the White Scars symbol I'm actually pretty pleased with but this one was quite tricky with regards to well just how symmetrical it needs to be for it to read correctly and uh, because the models already assembled the helmet plume and backpack are kind of getting in the way for me to control the the brush as I would need to at least um, because the models assembled it's making it a lot harder to do that intricate kind of work just something to keep in mind for um, hyper detailed pieces. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yes, so the white scar symbol here. Um, I do save it, even though right now it looks like a weird, I don't know, zone throwpe or something. But, um, you know, you can just keep cleaning up. I mean, you don't have undos when compared to like digital painting, but uh, you can always take your base color and clean it up a bit. And as you can see here, it's uh, 
actually getting kind of dark. I'm losing daylight and my camera's desperately trying to um, auto adjust. But um, with the white scar symbol looking decent um, and with lighting running out and the challenges I mentioned, I actually ended up using a decal for the uh, Reaver tactical symbol. And, you know, I'll probably, um, well, not probably, I'm, I'm recording this after the fact, but um, off camera I hit it with some lamian medium just to reduce the amount of gloss and we're done. Despite not having a mount, this White Scar's Reaver is ready to bring swift death to the foes of the Emperor. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video or want to see more or less of this style of content, leave a comment below. If you have any tips or suggestions, I'd be glad to hear them, and if you have any questions, ask away. And lastly, if you want to help this channel grow, consider subscribing for weekly videos. Thanks again for watching, and I'll hope to see you guys in the next one.